Ola Cheska here. I want to show you how I made my sleeper pillow lounge cover plus where I found the pillows for it. These are really popular on Pinterest right now and I wanted to make one for my daughter. However, the cheapest I found was about $27 on Amazon and that was just for the cover. That's not including the pillows. I found some cheap and expensive pillows at Target and I just went ahead and sewed a cover for it using the envelope sewing pillow technique that I kind of used on my sofa pillow tutorial. Now obviously it's a little bit different because I have a five of these pillows connected together but it is fairly easy. This tutorial I'm going to go in a little bit more depth of instruction just so if you're kind of beginner sewer then you can follow along. So I found this Room Essential plush pillow at Target. They're $3.99 retail. I used my Ebates account to get 1% back plus I used a 10% coupon that Target was offering. But check the description box so you at least can get the 1%. I purchased five pillows to make my pillow lounger. Now you have the dimension of each pillow being 20 inches by 28 inches. However, you need to get the physical measurement laying all five pillows together and then measuring from where half the pillow is on the side all the way down to the other side where half the pillow is that is going to be your length here i'm going to visually show you why it wouldn't work if you simply multiply 20 times 5 and 20 inches is going to be the height of the pillow and if you take 20 times 5 pillows you're going to get 100 inches but here, if you see, I laid the measuring tape down on the floor. At 100 inches, I spread out the pillows so that it'll cover that distance. And what you're really going to have are some major spaces in between your pillows, and it's not going to be comfortable. You really want to squish these pillows together so that they can be fuller. Using the envelope method, I will cut a panel that is 28 inches wide by 82 and a half inches in length. Now I'm going to show you here my math. Our current pillow, the one we bought, is 28 inches wide and yes we are going to cut the front panel at 28 inches and we will eat that half inch on each side so it'll essentially become 27 inches. Now for the 81 inch length for my front panel I need to add a half inch seam allowance on the top and the bottom of that panel. And then I need to add space for each pocket. So each line, there's four lines, I need to add space so that it can go down and back up. And I'm not giving it a lot of room, so I'm actually only adding 1 8 inch for each line, which 1 8 times four equals a half inch. So my front panel, you would cut 82 and a half inches by 28 inches. Moving on to the back panel. Well here I drew the same as the front panel, but now we're going to have to try to treat it as two separate panels. So we're going to want an overlap in the middle and then the two panels. So we have to figure out that math. It's 28 inches wide and then you need to divide it in half because we need two panels and that will give you 14 inches. Now you have to decide how much overlap you want for your back panels and the more you overlap, the harder it is going to be to get the pillows in there. However, it will not shift or fall out or open up. In my last video, I did the pillows for my sofa and I did four inches and this time I just decided to do five inches because it is wider and it's going to be used a lot more. So that'll give you 19 inches. So now we know we need 19 inches wide and we need to cut two panels. Each panel needs to be 82 and a half inches in length and 19 inches wide. And you need two to make up the back. Okay, so if you're gonna buy your fabric from the store, I'm just gonna give you the math to do that. So for the back panel, you need 19 inches wide times two, so that's 38 inches. And then you need to add 28 inches for the front panel width, and that gives you 66 inches. The total size you're gonna need for this project is 66 inches by 82 and a half inches. Most fabrics, if you're just gonna buy cotton, like I used a cotton for this project, they come in 42 to 45 inches wide. So you're gonna to have to piece this project together. However, I will show you how to do that. 82 and a half inches is equivalent to two yards and 10 inches. Now you're gonna need two 82 and a half inch lengths to create the front and the back panels at 82 and a half inches. And that becomes four and two third yards total length that you're going to need if you're buying 45 inch fabric. 
So now here's how you're going to cut that fabric to get your 66 by 82 and a half inches that you're going to need. So assuming this is like a 44 or 45 inch wide cotton fabric, a standard fabric, and you bought four and two thirds yards of length of that fabric, all you're going to do is measure out 82 and a half inches and you're going to cut there. It should be at the halfway point, um, but they don't always cut straight, so just make sure you're measuring and then you're going to cut that 28 inches wide and that is your front panel then you can turn your remaining fabric to the side and you're going to cut at 82 and a half inches and 19 inches wide and you cut two panels now the spaces that i darkened that's going to be your extra fabric but if you're going to do the ties like i am in this project then you definitely can use your scrap fabric for that Okay, so I'm gonna number these one, two, and three just so that you can see the assembly once you cut it. And again, this is if you're buying it from the store. I'm piecing mine like scrap fabric together to create these panels, but here it is. So you see your number one becomes your center panel, your number two and your number three are your side panels and they're gonna be sewn together. And that's gonna give you the 82 and a half inches by 66 inches that you're gonna need. So then you're gonna hem on the right side of that number three and on the left side of the number two. Okay, so here I patched together a panel and that's gonna be my front panel. If you've never cut in this great of a length before, you might find it kind of hard, so here's some tips. This fabric is about 45 inches wide and my table is not that big to, and my ruler is not that big to be cutting that wide of a fabric. So the easiest way to go about it is if I'm trying to cut the length here at 82 and a half inches, I'm gonna go ahead and fold the fabric in half lengthwise, and then I'll be able to get it to a size where my ruler can fit and I can make the cuts. I'm gonna make the cuts on the bottom, and then I'll measure 82 and a half inches and cut on top. Now you wanna make sure you have this folded as perfectly as possible, because if you have it turned a little bit, it's not gonna come out to be an even rectangle. So the same thing applies if you wanna cut the width of the fabric, except instead of folding it on the length, you're gonna fold it on the width, and so you fold it in half. And I actually folded mine again, here you see I have the four layers, I folded it once, folded it again, and then I'm gonna make the first cut to cut off the salvage, make sure I cut off all the salvage, and then I'll measure out the 28 inches in width that I need and cut there. Using my cutting board, I made sure that the side was lined up at the zero mark and that the folded edge was on a line. And try to be as precise as possible because again, it does affect the rectangle when you're cutting at such long lengths. So after you're done cutting, these are the three panels that you're gonna have. Two of my panels are pieced together, but essentially you have the panel two, panel one, and panel three. I really need my panel three to be matched up with my panel one, so I need to make sure that that is on the correct side and I don't mix it up with my panel two. If you sew the panels together, it'll help prevent you from making a mistake of hemming the wrong side on either panel three or two. However, if you lay it down like this, it really makes it easy to keep it in order. And so I'm gonna do my hem on the right side of number three panel and on the left side of number two panel, and then I'm gonna piece them together to make one large piece. I found this little quilting tool. It's just, it helps me with my hems. I just measure up one inch, press down, and then I'm just gonna tuck that raw edge into that new crease that I made, and that gives me my half inch. So now I'm going to attach panel 1 and 3, laying panel 1 right sides up and panel 3 right sides down, and then I am going to sew along the right side of panel 3. I didn't put any pins in because cotton doesn't shift too much, but if you're newer to sewing, definitely take advantage of the pinning so that you make sure that your side seams are aligned. Since you're working with cotton, it's really pivotal to iron these out. It's gonna help you in the next steps coming up. So keep the iron running. Right here, I'm sewing panel two to panel one. Okay, now that you have your hems done and your panels pieced together, we're gonna start with the folding part. Now, this piece here, I need it to be hidden, so it's important on which panel goes first. So I need panel two to be folded in first and then panel three to be folded in on top of it. If I fold panel three first, that is gonna be what is shown the most when you turn your pillows upside down. And since I really had to piece that panel together, I really wanted to hide it underneath 
panel two goes first and that is what's going to be shown the most when you turn your pillows over and then panel three. Now I hadn't pinned up to this point, however, there's so much fabric that once you get it in your machine, it's going to be pulling your fabric in different directions. Even if you have a sewing machine that's like flush with your table, you probably will have some weight added to there. So you definitely want to put your pins in. I put my pins low enough so that I don't have to remove them as I sew through and I'm sewing at a half inch seam allowance. It also will prevent the bottom panel like panel two from shifting be generous with your pinning you will sew the seam on the top and the bottom of this lounger i went ahead and reinforced my stitches by back stitching and then forward stitching back stitching forward stitching on where my panels are overlapping so the bottom panel two you're gonna have to feel for it but it's really thin cotton so you'll be able to feel for it no problem I, you just can't see it in the video the reason you want to do that is because that is where the first place that your stitches will pop because you're gonna have to stuff pillows in and out as you're cleaning it taking it on and off and clip the corners but make sure you don't get near the corner so you're going to turn your project right side out but you have to press the seams out as flat and as evenly as possible so i like to iron on the wrong side to try to get the seam flat <clears throat> and then i turn it right side out i push the seam allowance to one side give it a press and then i fold it and give it a press so that that seam is really popped out and it's crisp. You see here it's laid flat. The next thing we're gonna have to do is stitch our pockets. So it's important that this is laid flat and even because you do not want your pockets to be shifted. You need them all to be even and in line. So I'm marking mine at about 16 and a quarter from the top and then 16 and a quarter on the bottom. And I'm using my disappearing ink Mark Be Gone pen. I'm using the disappearing ink side. It starts to disappear over time with air and the Mark Be Gone side is you have to wash it to remove the mark and it worked perfectly for mine so when you make your line across the width of this fabric you are going to be marking on the back side and I say the back side just because you can see that first flap so to be able to reinforce it and you'll only have to find the panel 2 flap to reinforce that instead of trying to find both of them and then when you pin you want to pin with enough room so that you don't have to remove the pins as you're sewing you want to pin on the top and the bottom of the line this will prevent any shifting from going on and the panels to remain where where they need to remain because you're going to have the weight of the fabric on both sides pulling depending on what pocket you're working on so it really is important to pin at this point so you're going to lock your stitch at the beginning and that is going forward backward forward and then you're going to lock your stitch where each panel is and then you're going to lock your stitch at the end Moving on to the straps, I went ahead and just used my scrap fabric. I need four straps and I cut eight inch by three inch strips. Once you have all four cut, go ahead and fold it in half and give it a press with the wrong sides together. On each edge, I folded it up a quarter of an inch and pressed that so that the raw edges aren't showing. So I went ahead and pulled it both sides, touching that center crease that you created, gave that a press, folded it in half so that I can see that no raw edges were showing, gave that a good press, and then I sewed all the way around, locking my stitch at the beginning and the end. Now sometimes you'll find if your machine has trouble because it's only using one feed dog to pull this fabric through, it sometimes gets caught. And at the end, sometimes your needle will push the fabric into that little hole that the needle goes down into. So if you're not comfortable having your fingers close or if you just have an older machine and you don't have a sharp needle in there, you can also use like a small scissors or a pin to help push it through. And I go slow when I get to the corners. Here I can use like my small scissors and I just help push with my scissors and I'm pushing with my thumb backwards. And you'll have to use it again to get out of that corner. Here are the four lovely strips done. I'm gonna put them on the top two pockets of my pillow lounger 
So lay your pillow lounger front side down so the back side is up showing. And I went ahead and measured where I was putting mine and I decided at the 8 and 24 inch mark. Now pinning, you want to only pin through the back side. So it's kind of tough when it's laying flat, but what I did was pushed it a half inch down and then I pinned right at the top of the pillow lounger through all four layers. Then I put my hand through the pocket and pin just to the back side and the strip and then removed that first pin that was through all four layers and put a second pin in so that it really was just on the back side. So now we're gonna sew down. So I put my hand through the pillow pocket and then I got it all the way to where my strip is, put that around the arm of my needle, almost like you're sewing a, a sleeve on. And then I sewed in a square, then an X to close it off. And I stopped before I got to my front panel. So here you can see the pink fabric with the flowers is my front panel and the white fabric with the little girl and the fox is my back panel. I sewed all the way up into the front panel without sewing into the front panel. And then I sewed my X. And here they are sewn onto the back. By the time I got to the third pillow, I kind of figured out a better technique on how to stuff it in there rather than just stuffing it in there. And it really just came down to squeezing down one side of the pillow, stuffing it into that panel number two, and getting the corners in place. Then I just push down the leftover pillow into that panel number two, pull the panel number three fabric over the pillow, and then just get the pillow corners into the pillow pocket corners, and then just fluffed out the rest of the pillow. So it sounds like a complicated explanation, but really it's all about just getting the pillow into the corners and then you just fluff out the center. Here's a look at the pillow lounger stuffed the back view. Now I wanna show you why you put these little strips on the pillow. If you just kinda of tie them in a knot on both sides, then it becomes a lift. So then you have two pillows that you can kind of lay against. And again, this is for my toddler. This is not for an adult. These pillows aren't firm enough for an adult, but they are fun for your little one. Oh, how cool. Yeah. You can read a book. A book. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please hit the notification button and subscribe. God bless. Bye. Kara, can you wave to the camera? Wave hi. 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 Are you relaxing with your baby? Can you say hi, Mama?